Let's let's start with your area of expertise. Let's look at the Florida State Seminoles. Obviously, there are some Florida State fans that are disappointed in some of the, calling it a whiff wouldn't be that accurate, but some of the guys that they felt like they perhaps should have been in on coming down to signing day. Byron Coward, obviously right. not local, but relatively local. Uh, how do you evaluate the class as a whole? How does it compare to previous classes? Only 14, five, four and five stars, Dan. Right. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's not oh, Alabama. Poor, poor you. <laughs> I think Florida State did a really good job. I think I would probably give the class about an A minus. Uh, they, they did need another defensive lineman, in my opinion. Right. They, they didn't get Terry Beckner, um, and they really had this class for the most part wrapped up about a month ago. Yes. And you can look at that in a couple ways. You can say a they, they failed to finish, or you can say well they pretty you know easily procured most of the guys at whom they had a reasonable shot, and then down the stretch were more long shots. So you, I guess it kind of depends on how you want to look at it. It's not perfect. It's still really really good. They're still following the formula. Uh, to win national titles. Derwin James is actually the highest uh, rating that Rivals.com has ever given to a safety. Really? In what makes rate. him so good? Uh, he's 6'2", 210, and runs like a 4'4", and just hits like a try. He, just, it's, he, he takes over the game as, right. as a safety, which is something you don't typically see right. from that position. And against these spread offenses nowadays, if you have a safety who's that versatile, mm -hmm. we saw it with LaMarcus Joyner, we see, we see it with Jalen Ramsey sometimes. He can you come know. up and play the nickel if needed, come up against the run in the exactly. box, play center field. The other thing Florida State did really well was they early enrolled eight kids. Yes. Six of them are blue chips. And when you lose half your starters uh, you know, to graduation or to the NFL, yep. you need that infusion of talent. You need those guys in the program early, lifting weights, getting acclimated to the college life, understanding the playbook and all that stuff. Tennessee also did a great job with that. Clemson, Auburn, uh, all with a lot of early enrollees. Yep. That's becoming a bigger and bigger thing this year. And I think next year, maybe with the early signing period, we'll see more of that as well. Florida State signed Josh Sweat, the player who most likely would have been the number one overall recruit had he not blown up his knee. Right. George Campbell, a five-star receiver out of the Tampa area. Florida, Florida State finally goes down and does a good job in the Tampa area. Jock has Patrick running back out of Orlando. Like him a lot. Tavares McFadden, a five-star corner. They lose both corners in P.J. Williams and Ronald Darby to the league. So uh, needed some help there and, and got it. They also grabbed Marcus Lewis late. And uh, we'll see if they get Iman Marshall here in the 4 o'clock hour. I think he's going to USC. I was going to say, we'll, we'll that's, that's a big one. Biggie Marshall probably not, not heading to USC, or probably not heading to Florida no. State, but we shall see. He visited later on in without the process. His without his parents. So yeah. that's a sign.